can. You can drop that or whatever. I can go get it. That way you can monitor the chats. Chats. Hello, hello, hello. Can everybody hear me out there? We are live, by the way. And we are going to... Let's go. Hey, everybody. Oh, I'm hitting things now. Welcome to EMS Underground again. Hey, it's been a while. We've been missing for a little bit because, you know, COVID does that to people sometimes and things. So today I am here with, let's see, she's ready over there. Megan, yay. Hello. Where's my little clapper thing? My little thing. I don't know. Let's find it. Hey, so today we are going to talk about a few things related to stuff that isn't related as much so hey jace thank you for joining us today and please ask us any questions out there this this is a lot funner when we do have questions and jermaine yay we got some folks following us today and you know hop on there let us know what you're thinking what you want to talk about and i mean like just about anything and we'll do our best to answer questions if we can't get it if we can't answer it you know what we will we'll make one up right we'll just make up one no we won't make one up we'll figure it out um but i want to help you today figure out the things that the book doesn't help you with right there are things that the book doesn't help you with like how do i get a job you know, what do we do once we complete the program? And what about the things that are in between the lines? How do I figure that out? How do we get better at being an EMT or paramedic or, or advanced EMT and so on? How do we navigate all the crazy stuff that's going on out there? So that's those are the things that, hey, let's talk about. Let's go over it. And I got Megan here to help me with that as she's over there getting her stuff set up. Are you logged in, Megan? Yep. You're logged in. So let me, here, everybody won't see. There, there's old Megan there. You really typed waiting on Megan as usual? Yep, I am. I did. It's the truth. <laughs> yep. Was I waiting on you? I mean, what was I necessary? Like, was I? Did I have to be here? Was I a necessity for you to have your broadcast? Yeah, thank you, Jermaine. Because you can just say mm -hmm. I'm just that important and make me feel better. Well, we wouldn't go that far. <laughs> but we're talking about things like like the book doesn't talk about, right? There's a lot that the book doesn't talk about mm -hmm. out there. And one of the big things that I think is the stuff that's between the lines. And unfortunately, those are the things that the registry is going to test new EMTs and new advanced EMTs and even paramedics on, right? And those things are the most difficult. So how do we get through those things? How do we figure those things out? What You know, it's between the lines. How do we do it? So... One thing we got to do is we got to be pretty solid with the things that are not between the lines. 
What do I mean by that? Like key terms. Key terms. Know those. You know. Know the terms. Know what you're talking about. Know what it is that's being presented to you. At least on those concrete terms, the terms that doesn't change. The things you need to know what a myocardial infarction is. You need to know what a pneumothorax is. You need to know what. The, where the plural space is. You need to know all these things. And then we can start putting things together in between the lines. And it's not just the key terms. It's you got to know the signs and symptoms of everything. It's not good enough just to write them down once. You need to memorize these signs and symptoms. You need to know them. It's not okay for an EMT to be on the scene of an accident and not know the signs and symptoms of what's affecting that patient or in somebody's living room and somebody's like dying, you know, like, you know, and they can't talk, but you got to look at the signs and symptoms and you got to figure it out. You got to talk to the family and stuff and you got to know the treatments. But one of the most important things, so how do you get there besides just freaking sitting down with a freaking note card and a book and putting it in your brain? Practice it. You know what? Role play. Play. Scenarios. Keep doing it. Do it until you, you're sick of it. But try to make it fun, you know? Get your family involved. Make little cards for your families, you know, to, and let them choose what's wrong with them. And then have them pretend it out and go through it. And then figure it out. Kind of like Jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Charades, right? Have them play, you know, have a game of charades and it's their job to fool you. You know, it's their job to figure out one. It's their job to stump you. It's your job to get it right. Those are some of the things you can do. Um, And you just got to get good at, once you get good at those, then the stuff that's between the lines starts to become less blurry. You start to see more and understand more. And the more practice you do, the the better. And do as many clinicals as you can. The more hands-on time you get with patients, the better you get with it. The more experience you get, the better. So those are some of the main things that you can do that are going to help you become better practitioners in the field. And those are things the book doesn't really show you or tell you about. Francis. One big thing that it doesn't really show or tell you about are the ethical issues that you're going to run into. And we're going to run into a lot of those, right? Ethical, political issues and stuff like that. And those ethical issues can get you fired and get you in trouble. They can have a lot of consequences to what is going to end up being your career. So how do we stay out of ethical issues? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody going to help me here. So so you got to walk the walk and talk the talk. All right. So you got to really adopt this as your career you have to adopt it as your life and i like to say uh, what do i usually say megan the first night of class or during orientation that we can't do what we can't draw lines in what the sand and, right yeah yep. you cannot we can't pick and choose who we treat how we treat them everybody has to be treated what the same the same all the time right even if you don't like them right so if you don't like them you still got to treat them so let me ask you, Meg, I mean, what happens if you show up in, in your own scene and you're there with that child molester that you know is a child molester, It's he's been wanted, they've been looking for him, and he's been beat up really bad. Do we need to treat him? Well, I did not go to school to be a judge, and I'm definitely not a part of a jury. Exactly. I went to school just to learn how to treat someone. Right. And I have to treat everybody the same because you could always assume that someone is a terrible person, mm-hmm. but what if you're wrong? What if you are wrong? What if they are just accused and they're also wronged because mm-hmm. people lied about them? Yep. 
It's not your job to judge. Exactly. And that's the hardest part of the job sometimes. Yeah. I mean, there's been all kinds of situations, but it's not our job to figure that out. It's our job to bring care and comfort to whoever's hurt and injured, regardless of the situation. And I don't know about most people out there, but I know a lot of people when they're sick, they are not nice. Right. They're in pain. They're, they're uncomfortable. Mean, yeah. They don't want to be there either. So they're probably not going to treat you And they're going to the take best. it out on you, yeah. They are because you're the one that's there. But you got to be the professional. Mm -hmm. And if you're professional when you're on duty and you're professional at all times, when somebody accuses you of being unprofessional, it's a little harder to prove, isn't it? And there's going to be a lot more people backing you, too. Yep. Because it's out of your character. Mm -hmm. So you got to have a good character and stuff to to make sure that you are towing the line and doing what you're supposed to do. So those are some of the things that the book's not going to tell you, you know. But you, if you want to have a long, successful career in EMS, in healthcare, you need to be that way. And we got to put our patients first. You know, we our care and everything we do needs to be focused on, on the patient. And I know there's this huge case right now, and this is a can of worms, right, about a, a nurse that gave the wrong medication and a patient died and is convicted. And the questions are, should she be convicted? Should she not be convicted? Or whatever. You know, we're getting into a lot of legal issues and a lot of ethical issues. There's a lot of ethical issues that were broken there. There's a lot of procedure that was broken. And I always tell people this. What happens? What gets people all the time? All the complacency. time. Complacency. Complacency. Yeah, we get complacent. We get used to it. Mm -hmm. We get used to breaking the rules. And every time we break the rule, we can push it just a little further. And we keep pushing it further and further and further until eventually whoosh, something bad happens. And then everybody's like, ooh, yeah. we didn't see that coming. But then you can backtrack. You can see, well, yeah, but for years you've been breaking these policies. And sometimes it's just like, why did it take this long for something bad to happen? It's exactly. just sometimes people get lucky and they continue mm -hmm. to get lucky. For for example, not wearing your seatbelt. Yep. I mean, how many times, I mean, I'm going to tell you in my career, you know how many times I've gone out on people who... Did not wear their seatbelt. And they would always say, you know what? I haven't worn my seatbelt in 20 years. You can't make me wear my seatbelt. And then whenever you're in that one accident and you look at it and it's like, man, if only they had their seatbelt on. If only they had their seatbelt on. So complacency can get you. Complacency comes into play like with some of those ethical issues. When I get to work, should I check my truck off? Yes, I should. Should I check my drugs? Yes, I should. Should I make sure everything's sealed? My batteries are charged. Should I check the oil and the gas and the tire pressure in my truck? All these things, yeah. Even though day in, day out, nothing's wrong. You don't find any issues. Nothing happens. The trucks are fine. You don't have to fix anything. All the lights are good. Everything's fine. But then when that one day it happens, it happens. And if you find it and, and fix it, then you're good. But if you don't because you didn't look, then you're in trouble. And that can be very bad, right? And that's when lawsuits happen and when people can get hurt. Mm -hmm. So so those are some things that you're not going to see, like I said, in books, per se. And if anybody's got any questions, y'all just shoot them out there. I see we've got some people out there following us and watching. Y'all just... You know, throw a question to us. We'll be glad to ask. Um, Taylor, uh, can you expand upon what you put out here? Follow medical precautions, which is, and I'm going to go ahead and expand on it, but if you got anything further to say on that, please let me know because you should follow those medical precautions, especially, that's where I say the complacency, you know, um, comes into play because people will get complacent. And yeah, like, yeah, Carrie, it's better to be safe than sorry because people get complacent and not wear their gloves, mm -hmm. not wear their PPE. They'll take that needle and throw it down on the, or, or stick it in the seat cushion and then forget about it. And then they sit on it and somebody mm -hmm. gets stuck, you know? Let's see. I've got a question here. And Andrew just said that 
That's always a thing that I keep in mind when starting my shift about checking things off. Uh huh. The one time I don't check it, that's the day something happens. You're exactly mm-hmm. right. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for for sticking that through because you were exactly right. Because you know, I, I know myself when I was a captain, and I was one day and I was furious because I responded to a crew that went out on a cardiac arrest at eleven o'clock in the morning, eleven o'clock ish. And they were on the radio frantic because their life pack batteries were dead. They did not check the batteries, even though that checklist said they did. And they turned it in that morning. I was furious that day. We responded as fast as we could there. We mitigated the situation, did what we needed to do. The fire department, luckily the fire department was there and they had an AED there. And they were using the AED. I don't think it had anything to do with the outcome because the AED was there. It was reading the rhythm and they were working the code otherwise. But what if they didn't have that AED there? What if the fire department was on a fire somewhere else and there was no fire department there to help them? Andrew just said it happened to me. That happened to Andrew? Well, it, it wasn't you that I was talking about, so because yeah. I was never your captain, Andrew. So maybe someone else in. <laughs> I, ta- I was your instructor, but I wasn't your, your <laughs> captain. So, um, but it does happen, and sometimes it, it can be that your employer is pushing, you know, like crews are pushing. Oh, you got calls holding, got to hurry up. That's when you got to say, no, I got to check my truck off because if you don't check the truck off and something goes wrong, they're going to throw you under the bus. It's. Your license at stake, too. Yep, it is your license. You're going to be the one that's going to be in court. Yep, defending it, and they're going to be suing you mm-hmm. as well. And one thing they don't tell you in school, too, and which I do, I always tell people, you know, you need to get your own liability insurance. You know, your own liability insurance. It's not that expensive, and I'm not doing, and I'm not a salesperson for it, and I don't care who you go with or whatever, but you need to get your own because the insurance that the, the employer provides for you is for them now it will cover you to an extent but if it comes down to it where that lawyer that is representing you and the employer has to make a decision of who they're going to throw under the bus employer is going they're to be side with the employer yeah because that's the one you. paying the bill mm-hmm. yep so you want to make sure that like, you am I are gonna stick with this huge corporation or this one person yep it's an easy decision for them yep Yep, and Andrew says, not just one crew member check off the truck. Both Both crew crew members members. should always check off the truck. Yes, that's why it's a team. You are exactly right. It is a team effort, and both of you are responsible. I know where I used to work at, and even we had EMTs. The EMTs were responsible for checking off the drugs, even though they were not giving the drugs or whatever, but they everybody was responsible for checking the truck off bumper to bumper because it was a team effort. So it had to get done. Now, we did sign off. Now, where it would come into play is who signed off on it. So if the paramedic was there checking it off, then if something was wrong, then it would be the paramedic's responsibility, not the EMT's. But if they did not get checked that day, then it's both people's response because that EMT gets that same checklist and they should be saying, hey, Tom, we got to check these drugs. These drugs got to be checked. So... That's, you know, how how that would work back then. And same thing, like, if I was on the truck and I had an EMT partner and I'd look on checklist and tires hadn't been checked, hey, you know, have you checked the tires? You know, what's going on? You know, did you check the oil? So what would you do with the oil every now and then when you were a captain? Oh, it wasn't, no, that wasn't me. That was another place. Oh, okay. That's when I worked at, when I used to work for uh, AMR, down in Mobile, Alabama, they would their maintenance department was in charge of you know all the maintenance on the trucks, yeah. but we had to check the oil and stuff every day. And what they would do sometimes they would take a dipstick and they would have one that was cut in half, and they would put it in your truck, and then they would let us know because I was a supervisor down there. They would call us later and because they wouldn't even tell us that it happened, that they were doing it until afterwards. And if they did it, so if you're checking your oil, you would immediately pull it out and you'd see, oh, it's a half dipstick. Go to maintenance. Say, hey, here you go. Get your dipstick. Put it back in. Yeah. 
But then sometimes they would call us and say, hey, you know, unit 911 or 912 or whatever, you know, they didn't check their oil. And we'd call them in and say, hey, did you check your oil? Yeah, I checked my oil. And then we'd walk out with them and say, okay, show me. <laughs> and it'd be a half a dipstick out there. So and in that moment, they, let's knew see what Carrie, they messed up. Carrie just said on, on, um, on here, let's see, I've got a few here on Google. Let's see. Carrie says, better to be safe than sorry. Yes, always. I think we said that. And Taylor... Um, says, yes, those precautions are in place in order for providers to not be complacent. And you are exactly right, because complacency gets you. Mm -hmm. You get complacent, like, even driving. You know, you go through those intersections, and you don't stop and clear them like you're supposed to. I wish we videoed that um, ambulance clearing the intersection the other day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just the other day, we were just... We were stopped at the intersection, and ambulance just came through lights and sirens, hit the horn a couple times, and didn't even slow down. And I was like, that is that is a bad thing waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, because they went through that one time and nothing happened. That just reinforces that it's okay to them. And it's okay until it's not okay. And yes, emergency vehicles... Have the right away when their lights and sirens, but they still have to make sure it is safe. They are following due regard. Due regard. It's mm -hmm. their responsibility. Yep. If you get an accident, it's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Carrie says, not everyone brings in their batteries and walkies, causing a shortage of charged batteries and walkies. Yeah, you've got to put them on charge because sometimes that can cause a strain on the entire system to make sure that everything is charged and ready to go yep but andrew find good work habits make makes for job security mm -hmm. yes that is a good one please put a heart something next to that one where is that let me say like that yeah and if y'all are out there on facebook or whatever give us the likes and the thumbs up and and share this with everybody if you would please it helps us out a lot and we're trying to get the word out we're trying to get ems underground back up and going that's a slow start and Andrew you know, just said too like when you're going through an intersection you're asking for permission to pass through exactly. the exactly you're not telling mm-hmm permission Yep, permission. Because if their car comes up and they want to go, you got to let them go. And sometimes you, you need to think, too. What if it's an elderly person and they don't have their hearing aid turned on and no. they have no idea? They will not hear you. Or a younger person blasting the radio. Mm -hmm. They won't hear the sirens. I mean, these cars are made now so that they are so quiet. Sometimes it's, you don't hear the sirens until they're right up on you. Sometimes yep. you don't even notice until you see the lights in your rear view mirror. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes it just scare you a little bit. Yeah, you know? like, oh, is that me? Did I do something wrong? Yeah, and us as responders, we need to understand that and know that because that's what we're going to be running into with people out there. You know, the people, they may not even notice us or see us. When I used to ride motorcycles... And I miss my motorcycle some days, especially this time of year. Let's Gosh, go get one. I miss it. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't miss the payments and, you know, seeing it sit in the garage, you know, nine, ten months out of the year. Because when it gets really hot, it's not fun. When it's cold, it's not fun. But, you know, you you just got to, you know, drive. I used to ride like I was invisible. That's what I would say. I, I pretend that nobody sees me, you know. And when I'm when you're in the ambulance, you need to assume they don't see you until you know they see you. Like remember, at the same time you said we saw the one that just busted through. But remember later on, was uh, there was one that did it perfectly. I think, yeah. Was it yesterday? Perfectly mm -hmm. stopped, cleared the intersection. And made sure everything was clear. And they looked and went through. all directions. You, and, I saw them look all directions. They waited there, and then they went on through. I was like, gosh, I wished I had my mm -hmm. GoPro or or something up to, to film that. Because that was the like the perfect example. And if you were... That was here in Covington, wasn't it? No, it was, Where um, was it? in Winder. Yes, it was. So mm -hmm. if you were a responder in Winder yesterday... Good around, job. Yeah, good job. And that was on three... Was that... No, it was um, I, right look, in front of I'm the fire. I'm having an Alzheimer's moment, It was right in front of the fire department in downtown Winder. 
Right by Hardee's. Okay, yeah, that's it. It was right by Hardee's. Mm -hmm. So if you were that that um that that EMT driving yesterday by Hardee's, you did an excellent job. Yeah. Great, great job, because that was an ex excellent example of exactly what you were supposed to do and how to do it and, and being safe. I commend you on that. And, and keep doing it, because yeah. that's what it's going to take out there. So what are some, some, some other things that we don't learn in school is what to do after you finish school. The important thing, right? How do I get a job? Yeah. Yeah, hold on. Carrie just said, make eye contact, then proceed. Yes, Carrie. You need to make eye contact. That's what Make when sure you, they see you. Make sure they see you. Because if they don't, it could be bad. It's going to slow you down getting to the original call. You could get hurt. They could be hurt, you know. And we don't want to go through that at all. So we're here to help patients not create new ones. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And we don't want to be one either. We don't want to be mm -mm. one. No. So what do we do after we get through all this? You know, we're trying to find a job, right? People come here because they want a job. Mm -hmm. For the most part, people will go to school to become. So how do we But isn't do it that? so hard to find a job in EMS right now? Not right now. So the um, I think the thing that we need to talk about is how do you find the job that you want? True, because, I mean, you can throw a rock down the street right now, and just about anyone is hiring for EMS. Yeah. But what's going to work for you? Mm-hmm. Let's see, Andrew, hold on. He just said, apply everywhere. Yes. Yeah. I even take an extra second or two. Oh, yeah, he just said he takes a second or two because he was almost hit in an intersection. Yeah. Yeah. I was even when you're second. doing it right. You know, mm -hmm. even when you do everything right, you know, and go through the intersection slowly, you know. So. Um, if we go back to that real quick, it takes me back to that car accident that we were in when we first got your car. Oh, yeah. Um, we were, it was a super congested area and there was just one truck that just blew through. It was a green light, but they were going way too fast for how busy it was. And a person tried to look both ways, was trying to take a left-handed turn. And he got hit. And then they hit us. Um, pulled out slow, but he was just coming too fast and couldn't see him. Yep. Yep. And our car was what? Like a week new. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just, <coughs> you always want to take an extra second, whether you're the one driving or the one turning. Because... It just takes one second, one e not even a full second for an accident to happen sometimes. Now back mm. on to getting the job you want in EMS yeah. and the job that fits you. Because there's a lot of jobs out there that you can get mm -hmm. just by, you know, they'll just hire you. They'll, they'll be like, all right, so. You have two legs that yeah. work. No, you don't even have to have that. <laughs> um, do you have a pulse? Can you breathe? One. Yeah. Do you have a driver's license? Yeah. Do you have an EMS license? Working on it. Okay. I mean, sometimes they hire people before. Yeah, we'll put no. you on standby. But if you've got an EMS license yeah. and you've got a driver's license, you've got a decent, I mean, a, you know, a decent driving record, you're going to get a job. Yeah. You know, um, so things that you want to look for, all right? So it depends on what you're wanting to do. If you're wanting to make a career out of this, you need to look for a, a stable, dependable workplace, right? There are a lot of good, stable, dependable workplaces out there. There are uh, the big ones, like Metro, AMR, uh, and stuff like that. The big brands. The big brands. That you see everywhere. Yep. yep. The hospitals. Yeah, and yep. you're saying... The floor tech, yeah, emergency, that's good. Emergency, not emergency hospital in the emergency department of floor tech. And the fire departments. Fire departments. So how do you get those jobs, though? Because those jobs that pay better and have the good benefits, like Carrie said, you know, look for one that has good medical insurance that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. So the places that are going to offer that are looking for people who are of good sound character who are professional, who look professional, act professional, and did a good job in school. 
And probably if you did your clinical there, they probably remember that, how you acted and how you were. I love how you included look professional because sometimes people don't think that's important. Yeah. I promise you it is. Uh, unfortunately, and I understand that there is a generation out there that does not, that has a different thought on that. But unfortunately, for the most part, the places that are the big places that are hiring, that are looking to hire people who, and they provide the big benefits and stuff, they're usually ran by people who are what you call boomers. Baby boomers, older folks, right? And they value that. But they value it because most of the time when you present yourself and you look neat and clean, people are going to assume your ambulance is neat and clean. And and that's what people want. See, Taylor says, does mental health history play a big role in the interview process? And no, it does not. And if they're asking you questions about your mental health, they are committing a crime. It is illegal to ask questions like that. Andrew said, you look the part, act the part, be the part, fake it till you make it. Yep. Yep. I'm going to, you know, you can... You can walk into somebody's house, and if you look professional, you'll get less complaints. You will. But that doesn't make uh, everything right. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it wrong either, you know? But I'm just telling you that's just the, the, the fact of the matter. That's how you, you get those jobs. And like Andrew said earlier, apply everywhere. Even if you think you can't get the job, apply anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Go to the interview. If you get an interview and you're not even interested in that job, go anyway. Use it as practice. Practice interview. And you don't know what you're networking with either. Mm -hmm. Because that person that may be interviewing you may be also a captain of the fire department. That might be their part-time job and they may remember you. But if you just don't show and you ghost... Yeah, they're going, they might remember that. People in EMS talk. Yeah. Just about everyone knows everyone. And Andrew says a customer service savvy. Yes. And that's the main thing out there. The services, they just want people to be good to their patients. You know, and not only the patients, to the nursing staff, to the staff at the hospitals, and stuff like that, which is extremely important because those are secondary customers. Because the nurses at the dialysis center and the caseworkers at the dialysis centers are the ones that make the decision on who to, what ambulance to call to come take these patients back and forth. The nurses at the nurse's station at the emergency department, whenever it's time to discharge that patient to go home, they're the ones who make the decision. And to if do you that. cost an entire company a contract, you're or in trouble. Just, yeah. Yeah. Andrew said EMS is a tight network. Always network um, to all EMS people you come across. Yes. I would say it's almost like, more like a family. You may Mm -hmm. hate some, you may love some, but I know most people in EMS that I know, they've known us forever. Um, Most of his old coworkers, because of those of you who don't know, I'm sure you all know, I'm his daughter. They've known me since I was like two. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and now they're still around me. Um, they're, they're a great bunch of people to be around as long as you treat them know, accordingly, too. I know Andrew out there, he, <laughs> he used you as a patient. He did. He <laughs> did. So Andrew's seen me grow up behind the scenes, too. It's Yep. It just is what it is. It's networking. It's a family. It's who you'll be around. It's a life. It's a lifestyle. So, the, yeah, the dialysis clinics, the ERs, always talk to them. Because not only do you talk to them and it makes the employer happy, that's how you find the other jobs, right? Yeah, so, like what if you want to start working in a hospital? So, so sometimes you have to take the job you don't want. And once you get in there and you start working in the field, then you start meeting people from other services. And correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, because I'm sure you've done this before, too, where you've worked somewhere that's kind of crappy. And, you know, as you're working there and you go to the emergency room, you see that crew of the place that you would like to work there. You start meeting and talking to them. And then, you know, you see another crew from that same place or another service and you meet and you talk to them. And then you start finding out, oh, who is it that I need to talk to? Or either they tell you, oh, yeah, we've got an opening. 
You know, you may want to apply now or talk to this person. That and you also go from being just another name on a piece of paper. To somebody they know. To someone that's an actual referral from someone that's already been trusted in their company. Yeah. And if they can trust them and they trust you. Uh Uh-huh. They're going to trust you to work there too. Yep. And Andrew's like, yes, pay your dues, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Got to pay those dues. Um, and that's how you do it. And you get out there and eventually that job will come. You may not get it a, a right out the door. Some of when you get right out the door, you got to take that job to get a little bit more experience. And once you get more experience and meet people, you know, you get in. Unfortunately, sometimes it's more, it's a lot, it's not more, but it is a lot of who you know. You know, let's see what Carrie says here. Carrie says, why does the county service not allow you to work for them if a school wasn't accredited? I found big private companies do hire as long as you have your license. And I don't know what service that does that, Carrie, because I know, I mean, EMT schools aren't, there's no accreditation for EMT schools. So the only accreditation there is for EMS is paramedic. So, as far as that goes, if you're a paramedic, you, um, if you're a new paramedic, you went to a, a an accredited school. If they're going to go by that, well, then they would not hire me. They would not hire most of the paramedics that are instructors. Because most of us that's been paramedics over 20 years did not go to an accredited school. Because it didn't exist. Hmm back then so um i don't know what service if they're hiring emts you know they're telling you something wrong because there is no accreditation for um there's no accreditation for um emt or advanced emt andrew also just said remember you can always better some skills from any ems job you get as well yep you can so any job you get you should be getting better you should be learning more Yep, uh, learning the system, learning mm-hmm. how things work, learning why you don't want to work there. <laughs> you know? And that's only gonna, going to add to your skill set and why other employers should hire you. Yep. You. <coughs> sorry, sorry, y'all. Uh... Sorry, y'all. I had some uh, tea from Bradley's. <laughs> and it's not a not a advertisement for Bradley's barbecue. But for some reason, yeah, (laughs) but if you want to sponsor us, we'll take it. Just just send us some wings. Yeah. We'll be cool with that. We'll be cool with that. We'd like that. But, um, but yeah, I swallowed some has come down the wrong, as you know, down my trachea. It's not the, it's not Bradley's T's fault. It is basically 100% him. Yeah. I guess it's all my fault. But even though, you know, everybody got to see that by looking at Megan because I forgot to hit the button. Maybe I'm having an Alzheimer's moment or something. So, Please you don't. know, it happens from me. All right. So, yeah, Carrie said, okay, thank you. I was truly confused because we all work hard. Yes, you do. I mean, for, I don't I don't understand where they would be coming off uh, or talking about, you know, about... Uh, you know, not hiring if your school wasn't accredited. I, I don't, I've never heard that because if that's the case, they would not ever hire an EMT or advanced EMT. You know, now because K help only accredits paramedics. Yeah. And stuff. So yeah, you're you're welcome, Carrie. Anytime. You know, anytime you ever need anything. You know, we're here to answer anything. So. As you're out there looking for those jobs that you want, just remember, always be honest, always be truthful, and always go in with, be enthusiastic, be the person that you were in that interview. Because like Megan said, things we do get, things do come back around. Word passes around and everybody knows everybody in this field basically so you want to always make sure that you are doing a good job because if you're not doing a good job that word will get out very quickly about you let's see all right net job you can better your pcr yes Mm -hmm. Uh, you know in that skill 
And, and we don't think about that. You know, like the PCRs is so vitally important for us because that's the way we get paid. And people complain about the pay. And let me, I'm going to get on my soapbox for a little bit about the pay, you know, in EMS. Because the pay sometimes is not the greatest. But it's good enough for you to live on. I know I did when it was much less. And, you know, it's a lot more now. But I know inflation's been up there, and I know times are different. However, the only way things are going to change so we can get where we need to be at in this profession is that our reimbursements need to be changed so that we get reimbursed more, so that Medicare, Medicaid, and insurance companies pay more for our service. It needs to be considered an essential service so that we get paid all the time and people need to recognize us as being important so that they do pay us for the services that we do provide the pcr is what the insurance companies go off of and if you're not doing your pcrs correctly and you're not doing them good enough and your service is not getting reimbursed because you're not doing your job you're not going to keep a job long so make sure you do that and stuff so let's see yep the pay is not great but you can find some really great paying jobs yes you can there's some that aren't so good but then there's some some jobs some out there that are but also too you realize that most of the time you work less than half the year so you get you can get more time off or you can work other jobs and stuff like that so this is a profession something you got to want to do it and I know, Andrew, you've been doing this for a while. You want to do it. Andrew just said he just did some travel contracts for COVID-19 and got paid fabulously. Yeah. You can do that. And then there's also like the movies. I was paying good. And honestly, some of the jobs, they get paid in more than just money. money yeah. Like film, film well, medics. Well, like Andrew all just said he went all over get. the country. Yeah, the travel you can do. Mm-hmm. It's... I enjoyed growing up with dad doing or being a paramedic because when he was off, he was off. Right. He wasn't just off, like over the summer, he could be off all day instead of doing a nine to five and then just doing whatever when he came home. You have a lot more potential there. Also, if you're younger, it makes it possible for you to go to college more. That's you can a, do night. I made it through college. Yeah. Like if you just do a night shift on the ambulance, when I did my clinicals, a lot of the people were talking about that. They were mm -hmm. in college during the day. And did night shifts every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the flexibility, too, with the schedule. You can't find that at normal jobs. Right. It's like you have to have open availability. You have to come in when you're called. It's not comparable. Right. Yeah. Tons of overtime. And Carrie, yeah, I know you want to be a teacher. If that's the route you want to take, what you got to do is get that experience. Mm -hmm. You know, get your get your certifications, get your experience. Start CPR instructor is an essential start. That's where I started many, many years ago as a CPR instructor and started learning to teach and loving to teach. Teach the best you can all the time. Any chance you get to teach, teach teach and i mean because you're only going to get better at teaching by teaching and stuff so i uh, also want to go into medical transport and she's talked to charles about yeah and charles is a great resource mm -hmm. over at trinity yeah that is a great place to start and a good place to do you'll get a lot of experience talking to patients being able customer service doing great paperwork i mean there's a lot of movement there. And they pay really good, too, by the way, and yeah. stuff. And, yeah, the net jobs are great for schooling. I know whenever I first, my first job in the field, I worked as an intermediate on a on a transport truck. And our first, our main job was to do transports. And I got so much experience doing that. I did that for about my first six months until I could get on a 911 truck. Yeah. And you're saying you can, even if you're just an EMT, you can still get your ACLS PALS and other certifications yeah. to make you more valuable to employers, too. Yes. I used to, when I worked at Newton as a captain, it was a requirement for all our staff. That's what I did. I was overtraining, and I made it a requirement. 
And our EMTs, man, they pitched a fit. And if any of y'all are out there listening, y'all go ahead and say, yeah, we did. But then after, when it was over with and they got that ACLS card or they got that PALS card, they were extremely proud of it. And they knew how to work a code better. They could, uh, they understood what was going on. They helped anticipate things. And they were proud to have that card. And do I see Jerome? Hey, yeah. Jerome. He said CPR is one, that one skill that every healthcare provider must know. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I feel like as an EMT, we should be an expert in it. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I think all EMTs, it would it would benefit all EMTs to be a CPR instructor and to get really good at uh, doing CPR and stuff. So, uh, Andrew, I've been in this 10 years or more. Yes, you have. Man, are you trying to make me feel old, Andrew? <laughs> it's He's been, your student. <laughs> it's been more than 10 years because you were in my class over at Georgia Piedmont or it was DeKalb Tech or Georgia Piedmont at the time. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if you were at the DeKalb Tech days or the Georgia Piedmont days. So it's been over 10 years. So you're getting old too, man. Stephanie um, just said I worked for a year as an ALS transport truck at National as an EMTI. And he they got great at PCRs in doing that. Yeah, and which, hey, Stephanie. Said it's been a long time. Good this, thanks for being here. But yeah, you know, that those, those steps to get to, especially if your plan is to become paramedic, get into ALS, those NET trucks are invaluable because you can get so much so much hands-on time talking to patients and perfecting your assessment skills and doing your time management and your PCRs, it can get it can get even better. It helps multiply and make you more valuable and ups your value for the company. All right, so we have an answer from Andrew. First half of school was to Cab Tech, then changed over to GPTC. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's right. Back in the day. Yep. I yep. remember running around there acting like a patient. Yep. <laughs> yep. I remember the day, you know, um, th- th- when it all changed. That was a big deal. So, yep. Uh, let's see. Yep. Hey, first half school was camp. So, you can take this, you know, any job you go into and use that to help propel you to the next level and that next level could be where you want to be or maybe that's a one step closer to where you want to be but use that time and use it wisely Mm -hmm. even though you feel like at the time you may be stuck somewhere or it may not be productive it is and you can make it productive and it can get you to where you want to be. There's a lot of good places out there to work. And sometimes you got to hop around a little bit until you find the place that fits you. But what fits you may not fit me. So, like, for myself, I, I did NET early in my career until I didn't have to. And once I got out of it, I stuck with 911. 911 was my thing. I did not like NET. But there's other there's people out there that love NET. There's people out there that do both, who see the value in both. And I see the value in both. I don't downplay NET because it is, I consider it an essential part of what we do. But, you know, if I had the choice to run a cardiac arrest versus a dialysis transport, I'm doing the cardiac arrest. Whereas I know I have friends that would swap with me in a heartbeat. He lives for the adrenaline. Yeah. Yes, I do. Too much of it, right? Jerome started in 1975. Thank, you, thank you, Tom, and I help others learn EMT skills. Yeah, skills. Yes, Jerome, you. <laughs> everybody loves it when you're here. Yeah, I love when you're around. Yes, we love having you here. You are great, mm-hmm. and Jerome, I met Jerome at DeKalb Tech as well. Oh wow! Yeah, he came there selling stethoscopes a long time ago. Because a little story about Jerome is he invented. He was an inventor of a stethoscope. So if you ever have any questions about stethoscopes, as he knows all about them, and they are a lot more technical than you think. I think, I think I was there one day and I met him. God, fifty. It was a while ago. A long time ago. At like a little fair. At the at the college, I think. I may have been. That was a long time ago. So many ago. things happened. Um, but yeah, again, networking and EMS is crazy. 
Is that and it Brent? starts at your. Is that who? Brent. Hey, Brent. Brent DeMarc. Good to see you, man. But it, the networking also, it really starts, if you don't start before your EMT school, it starts during too, because your instructors will more than likely remember you. And if not, things will trigger them to remember you based off of your name, coursework, stuff like that. And they can be great recommendation people for jobs. Um, that, or if you're really rude to them, maybe you don't want to say that they were your teacher. But just make the most of it in your EMT school too. Um, because they can be great assets once you finish as well. Because they've been in the field probably for decades also. And their network can easily become yours if you tr take school seriously. Yep. So I got a question here from... Um Taylor, um, I'm sorry y'all got my bifocals. I'm getting old. I know it's at the back up and so I can see. So can I take the registry this year even though I'm a combo student? And yet you can take it after you finish your EMT class. Um, you can get with us and we can help you with that. Um, so what's the difference between the two? Well, the, the two, the EMT is going to be focused on the more of the BLS stuff in there's a lot of BLS in the advanced one as well, but they're going to have a lot more advanced stuff in there. So just focus on your EMT for now, and whenever you get there to the end of the EMT program, we'll get you ready for that EMT exam for sure. So you don't have to wait till you finish both EMT and advanced EMT to take the EMT exam. And I would recommend you don't wait because, yes, the advanced EMT class will help you prepare for your EMT national yes. registry but that's just two exams you have to worry about at the end and that's just going to make you stress so much more than you need to right um that and we've had so many students get their license during their advanced course and they even got jobs yep. and started working and that helps Help them, them a even lot. more especially with their for the advanced EMT program yep. more experience mm -hmm. hey brent man it's great seeing you man we've been doing good surviving covid you know ems yep. underground went you know silent a little bit covid knocked us down but we're gonna try to get it back up but it's great seeing you man uh you need to come by and let's get caught up i'd like to see how you're doing I haven't seen or talked to you in a bit yeah. hopefully we'll see you more and more on here and stuff so so yeah we need to to um focus on if you're for taylor if you are doing the combo make sure you do um you know make sure you just go ahead and do that oh my goodness look at it's this Charles. we have an employer with oh, us real rock star. and what yeah. brent just said he's also offering what are you talking about is it just delayed that much it's right yeah right here <laughs> I don't have a thousand TikTok followers. How'd you do it, Tom? Hi, I'm, I'm special. We're magic. We are oh, magic. Oh, no, I see you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to you too much. I know y'all are doing your live streams. Hey. How long are you staying? Uh, how long are y'all doing your stream? We got probably another 10 minutes. I might stick around for that. Yeah, come I'll, on. I'll leave you up to it. He's but, hiring. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Trinity. I'm hiring. I, so I'm here tonight. I am hiring. Here, get down here. here. I am hiring. I'm blasting your ear out. That's fine. I am hiring, and it's a great school. <laughs> um, yep. Brent also put in the comments he's also hiring. Oh, Brent. See, we're saying everyone's hiring. Everybody's hiring. Where are you working at now, Brent? Throw it in there so we know. So we can tell people, man. We're, we're you know, we're, we're getting the word out for everybody so that, um, so that, they can find jobs, and we'll help you. You know, you help us. We send help us you some and flyers. stuff. Yeah, send us some flyers. Let us know. So Andrew said he was able to do my advanced test days after graduating and receive my license the next month. Yeah, it's even faster now, Andrew. Mm -hmm. the, they have streamlined it so much now so that you can get your license so much faster. After I turned, so I, you can hand it in in person. I think I just mailed mine, and I got my license three days after I put it in the mail. Okay. So it was fast. Cool. So Brent says he's working over at National EMS five divisions. So um, 
Cool. Yeah. Well, well, you know, we're always telling people about now, you know, nationals right here at us. I know nationals hiring real good, but if you can get us some flyers or, or if y'all want to come in like tonight, we've had three services come in tonight to talk yeah. to students. So just let us know. And, you know, we we're more than happy for y'all to come by and talk to the students if you want to. I know we had Ronnie from, um, Walton County MS came a few weeks ago and talked to students as well about, um, stuff and we'd be glad to have you come by. So, and congratulations on becoming a commander at National. Uh, Brent, wow. proud of you, man. You've come a long way since you walked through the door a long time ago wanting to be an EMT. Proud of you, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and Andrew, yeah, he's one of the first advanced in Georgia. Ooh, did Does you that make you feel old? Yeah. Um, <laughs> did, did you get... Not you, Andrew. Him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you get to keep that number when they changed over the licensing system and stuff? I think, I think, uh, yeah, I kept mine, so probably did. Mine didn't change. Didn't? No. I knew they were talking about people's going to change and stuff. So, but yeah, if you are out there, you are an EMT student looking for a job, you have really little excuse. If you are somebody who's wanting to be an EMT and you're afraid that there may not be a job, there's little excuse for that because there are plenty of jobs out there. And like I said, tonight we've got people coming in to um, talk the talk. And, you know, they are asking, wanting, begging for people for jobs. And they're like, I hear Charles out there right yep. now still talking, you know, talking I up people the trying to get on it. break now. So he's catching them. Yeah, he's catching them on break. Yeah. Getting them. Andrew said he was able to keep the number. Oh, good. So I guess they keep were able number. to fix the system somehow before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we are we are getting here to the end. We've been doing it for an hour now. Yeah. The system's going to shut us off. It shuts us off a little bit after an hour. Anyway, so thank you all very much for being with us here tonight. We plan on doing this on a weekly basis again. So we're getting it back up so that we can have, um, you know, an avenue for us to talk about things. I'm going to get better topics going up. Yeah, if you guys have any questions or you want things covered, yeah, let's send talk. us a message. Let's get it up. Comment. Yeah, it helps the students. Our students are a lot quieter. They don't like to speak up, but they're watching. And we need to help them. We need to help foster them and into the system. And they don't even know what questions to ask yeah, yet. Yeah, that's They're the figuring problem. that out. They are figuring that out. Andrew said, now how to get your NREMT back once it laps. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah. We'll talk about that. And... Oh, Stephanie hasn't been on since August. Y'all take care. I'll be in the ER at Rockdale. Nice. I got you. Nice. Good. Brent good said they'll be by. I'd love to talk to some classes. Yes, please. Please. Please do. Hit we us up, Brent. We love guest speakers. Yes, we love it. Yeah, love y'all to come in. Please let us know, ma'am. We'll get you We'll get you squared away. I think the students get bored of all of our faces yes, they here. Do. <laughs> Yeah, and it's good so they know what the they can talk to people that are in the field and that yeah. they get excited and and stuff. We need to keep that excitement going. So, all right, well y'all have a care. great one, everybody. Thank y'all for your time, and we'll see you next week. See ya. Bye guys. Bye.